microphone. There we go. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> ah, that's funny. Anyway, how's everybody doing? Uh, long time no see. It's been a couple of weeks. Um, let me see. I want a little bit more light. Let's get this. Gotta tie up my curtain a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, things have been as good as they can be in Happy Town. Oops. My hands are forgetting how to do a simple knot. Alright, that's a little bit better. Alright, well, welcome. Uh, it should be fun. So, last night on my, uh, on my poll, uh, on Instagram, I asked what people would like to see. I gave the options of uh, black superheroes, uh, heroes from black history, or uh, characters or creatures from uh, from black folklore, which I thought could be really cool because there's some really cool ones. Uh, talking about like a Nancy the Spider, or there's a, a really cool, um, a really cool version of a vampire, if you will, called I think it's called a Boo Hag, if I remember right. There are a whole bunch of things that are really, really cool. Anyway, so what we, what I decided to, to do, so it's the uh, black superheroes, black superheroes won out. I mean, I gave the options of like Black Lightning, Frozone, Storm. Uh, Storm won like a lot. <laughs> uh, a lot of people really wanted Storm. So we're gonna pick Storm. And this is the Storm that is my favorite. Love, I love this version of Storm. Such an elegant costume and everything. Um, first thing first, uh, ZBrush needed an update. So this just popped up like just before starting the stream. So uh, I gotta go through either well, so I guess, you know, first things first, let's take a screenshot of this just so we make sure we can remember it. Um, your version of ZBrush is available. Okay, please upgrade to update your version. Please exit ZBrush and browse to its installation folder on your computer. Then you'll find the Z Upgrader uh, application. Run that to be guided through the upgrade. Uh, you can also uh, download the full install on my licenses. Okay, so the, the, the My Licenses, you just go into the uh, Pixelogic website, uh, there's the Licenses tab up the top, uh, and you can go through and you can do that there. Um, I'm trying to decide whether or not I actually want to go through and do that right now, because Zebra should still function just fine right now. Um, yeah, let's just, let's, let's not do it for right now. I'm going to go ahead, let's load in Face Mesh and get started. Okay, so this is Face Mesh that I went through and developed uh, for such instances as creating awesome female characters. So um, I want to go through and actually take her to make her look a little bit more like um, our reference. But we're going to use that as a base. So let's come over here and let's find. I got to make sure to keep an eye on my, uh, on my, what's it called, my internet signal because it gets buggy. <laughs> if the music is too loud, just let me know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let's take that way down then. Let me know if that's. Let me know if that works. If that's good. Um, and if the music is just too much at all, you know, I just we'll we'll just get rid of it. I just wanted something kind of something there, you know, <laughs> something kind of action adventure esque. Uh, okay, so ZBrush, we're going live projects. Characters for fun, storm. Okay, so now we just go ahead and load that in the spotlight and call it good. Pull this up over here. Okay, cool. So now, because I want to keep that spotlight, I want to come up here and save spotlight. All right, 
Cool. Alright, and the only other thing you have to do, brush, samples, turn off spotlight projection. Otherwise, everything will be kind of only affected by what's uh whatever's inside of that uh that spotlight image. Yeah, so yeah, here we go. Alright, so first things first, let's go ahead and start manipulating some proportions. Okay. I want to take this to be much more natural. Okay, so there are going to be a lot of things I got to fix, got to change. Let's see. So you'll notice on my on my mesh, this is something that I learned from my mentor Zach Petrock at Disney. Um, Poly groups are a huge way to be able to define landmarks, uh, to be able to define transitions in, in plane changes and things like that. Uh, it's also a great way to be able to um, make selections. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna take this. Right, let's, let's take this like this. Start modifying bits and pieces. That's probably a little bit too prominent, but you know, just trying to just trying to play with it a little bit. All right. It's always fun to play with different styles. Okay, so now this this is coming up too high. Let's kind of play with that. Let's play with the eyes. The eye size is going to play a huge role in how we actually perceive uh, this character and how we relate to it. So let's go ahead. Oh, so, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Steven Anderson. Um, I am a. Actually, let's see. Uh, so, I am a. Uh, I'm a character modeler. I am a visualization modeler. Um, my most recent gig up until the pandemic was. Um, was a 3D concept modeler for Walt Disney Imagineering. Uh, got my Marvel shirt on. <laughs> um, hey Randy, how you doing? Um, so yeah, uh, that's a little bit about me. I teach uh, stylized character creation at, um, at Noman. Let's go ahead and actually let's let's leave that the way it was. Um, Noman School of Visual Effects in Hollywood, and uh, yeah, I have a I have a ton of fun with it. It is such a fantastic, fantastic job. Yeah, here we go. Um, let's see, let's go back to the eyes layer. Okay, so I'm trying to make them smaller without getting them too close together. Okay, so yeah, something like that might work well for now. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay. Cool. Okay. A couple layers we can turn off. Let's turn off the moles layer. We might bring them back in later. We'll have to see. Um, uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, but so if anybody has any kind of questions or anything, let me know. I'll try to I'll try to get to them as they as they come up. Uh, last time had a had a ton of fun with a bunch of people. Um, so yeah, and here we go. Uh, let's let's get this started. Okay, I want to make this this. This particular image of Storm, she feels a little bit lighter skin, and right now my model is way lighter skin than I want her to be. Uh, let's let's bring her in, make her a little darker. Okay, so I'm gonna go into poly paint. This will just kind of help me to kind of uh, get a more complete vision as I'm sculpting. Uh, so that way, so that way, as I as I complete this character, I'm getting a lot more. Um, well, a lot, a lot clearer of an idea if I'm getting closer to where I want to be or not. So let's go ahead and take this. We're going to say RGB intensity, kind of pull it down some, pull saturation up a little bit. And it's, it's going to be kind of a little bit of a back and forth with this. I want to be careful not to make it feel like it's just being masked. That feels a little bit too red, so maybe we'll just take red intensity down. Let's play with let's play with some of these sliders and try to try to get some balance in there. Okay, this isn't this isn't really working. So let's let's try this. Right, yeah, let's just let's just let's just pull it over from the beginning. Let's just go ahead and say you know, she's got like these really nice copper tones. Let's just let's just pull colors in from her to start with. Um, <laughs> oh, look at how orange that is! Wow. Okay, definitely like super super tone that out. She definitely feels much more brown now. That's that's a little bit too dark for what I think I'm wanting to go for. This might work as a good base color. Okay. Pull out my standard brush and pull out some colors and just to be able to kind of highlight some of these areas a little bit. bit to the chin, a little bit around the jawline, uh, change my smooth so that it can smooth out the colors some. It's interesting how it's getting rid of the color as I, <laughs> as I smooth it out. It doesn't feel like it averages it out too much unless you're just doing it around the edges. Um, Yeah, you see, derailed. Do you have a formula for character topology, or does it vary from sculpt to sculpt? So it, it all depends. Uh, the thing the thing that you'll notice is like the loops is is what I try to pay attention to. Um, this is obviously in need of a lot of cleanup, but. Yeah, things get clean, get messy as you as you move things around or whatnot. But uh, one of the important things with with topology is you got to think about deformation. You got to think about uh, when you go ahead and pose it or animate it. It's got to be able to move in a specific way. That's way too strong. Um, and the general principle that I think about when trying to decide about where to put my topology is um, what direction does the thing move? So, hey, Brian, how you doing, brother? <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you. Uh, so the thing you want to think about with topology is that uh, you want to think about the accordion 
um, principle. Okay, so every everything that moves your your arm, uh, you want those points to go in a linear direction, you know, towards each other. Okay, and and so you know you get things like the the loops around the eyes, uh, as those eyelids kind of close. Uh, you have nice even topology going around. It's going to give you nice even shape that you can kind of just pull and drape over your over your eyeballs. Um, as they're open, those points are just going to move closer together in a linear sort of direction. Um, got a little bit messed up with the with the move, but yeah, you know, it's okay. We'll, we'll fix it as we go. Um, But yeah, so so that's kind of that's kind of the main idea um, in this, and let's see, let's do this. Control A. Okay, now I want to get the that uh, that lip color in there. So with Spotlight active, I can go in and I can select colors from the Spotlight image, uh, and it's it's super super helpful. So we're gonna do that. So then just gonna come over here and we can say color, fill objects. So that way her lips have that fill to it. Now she kinda looks like Iris West from uh <laughs> from the flash. That's kind of funny. Okay. This is where we want to go through and start deciding. All right, character, character look, character feel. Yeah, she really does kind of look like Iris. That's funny. It's gonna kind of take this and be be decisive with different landmarks of the face. Okay. How stylized should I keep this? Should I keep it kind of more in the direction of what I have? Should I push her more in the direction of the image? What to do? What do you guys think? Let me know. Make sure that they line up a little bit better. Since we made those adjustments, gotta adjust everything else too. Let's see. Like it as is. We will take it a little bit more in that direction. It's because it's it's got so much cool vibe to it. Okay, so let's let's start thickening out the the rest of the rest of the body to feel more like that. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. We are going to. Let's turn off the. Pizza boxes. Kind of scale that out a little bit. Give it a bit more shape. 
The torso needs to be longer. So what I like to do is just kind of like soften my mask out. And we'll just kind of elongate it out some. Now what we gotta do is just kind of adjust everything in here. I want to I want to pull the arms up a little bit more so that it's more of an A pose. You have no taste. <laughs> no. Everybody has taste. So how is, how is everybody doing? How is uh, how is quarantine life for everybody else? Where is everybody else from? Uh, right now I'm in LA. Um, Kind of pull these muscles, have more shape. Yeah, let's pull up some reference. So I like to keep my, my 3D total uh, anatomy figures close by, so that way I can use them as good reference. Um, this will be good for me to be able to kind of keep track of the way anatomical landmarks should be transitioning. Um, I'm going to fix some of this stuff going on in here. Okay. It's a little bit larger than, than my base model. I'm just going to kind of block that, block it in, blob it in, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Pull that around, something like that, for now. Okay, and then I want to kind of pull these hips out some to change my masking. I don't like using the mask pen unless it's very, you know, it's 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 very based on specific. Um, yeah, too much, too much thigh. Um, unless it's, you know, something I specifically need, you know, like to be able to draw it onto the mesh, or if I need to be able to make a very straight vertical or straight horizontal uh, mask selection, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, B, I'm on! <laughs> Good way to start the morning, thought you were modeling Kim K- yeah, definitely not Kim Kardashian. No, in fact, I was uh, I was joking around for a second, uh, saying that she looks a little bit more like Iris West from The Flash. <laughs> kind of, kind of cool. It's Portugal, huh? Little <laughs> Bane. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's uh, make sure that the inside of the mouth is the same color. And make sure that I got that. Oops. Let's go color, fill object. That way I don't get a weird fade on the inside of the mouth when I when I bring my level down a little bit. Um, I'm gonna block out some hair. It's uh let's let's do that. Let's say eyebrows. Uh, let's not use the eyebrows layer then. What about the eyelashes? Cool. We'll use the eyelash layer to pull out hair. <laughs> okay, let's come over here. Let's grab polysphere. Let's come over to the center. This is kind of the way that I like to start off hair most of the time. Okay, so what I'll do, cool, yeah, so let's do that. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's say split, unmasked, 
Let's take the hair down to the bottom, rename it. Okay, and then we gotta recolor it too because her hair is not that color. Let's come up here, let's pull from that. That'll be cool. RGB. Oop. Color fill object. Okay, so now we're just blocking it in. With the eyes, we can also do something similar where we just go ahead and just pull the color out. Um, I'm not going to pull the color out entirely right now. Um, and the reason is I want to be able to make sure that I keep track of like where her eyes are pointing. Um, so I'm going to say, you know, pull my RGB intensity down some, color, fill object a few times so that it's still, you know, a little bit dark. Yeah, it's got, that's got a cool vibe to it. That'll probably work for us anyway. All right, so let's start really kind of blocking in hair more seriously here. Yeah. Oh, we got some. We got a few, uh, a few friends from Portugal here. I started learning Portuguese a little bit on uh, on Duolingo. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> I'm used to Spanish, and, and so the pronunciation differences, the uh, um, the different the different letters, the alphabet letters, and whatnot. It's just kind of kind of tricky to uh, to get used to, like bao, <laughs> saying bao, you know, instead of pan. Um, it's kind of a kind of an interesting word for me. Menino, mulher. Okay. Don't think I'm liking how uh, how blocky that's looking. Let's let's get let's get a more appealing shape in here. Uh, yeah, let's 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 pull a, a more a more head shape in here. Let's let's get this. really kind of set up more in a, in a more naturalistic sort of proportioned way. Make the ear smaller. Oh, let's, let's do this. So when we shrink it, it's going to shrink toward the center and I don't want that. Let's just hit local symmetry and keep it so that it's, it stays centered. Makes it feel a little bit more natural. It's the R's that you have to worry about. I guess there haven't really been a whole lot of R's and words that or at least, I mean, I haven't noticed any kind of uh, difference between R's in English and R's in Portuguese yet. Well, R's in Spanish, R, R's in Spanish and R, R's in Portuguese. Um, with the difference of not having to worry about rolling my R's um, quite as much. Um, but I don't know. I guess we'll wait and find out. And pull that forward a little bit. Okay. Oops. Oh, let me see. Just kind of smooth that a little bit. Right now, I'm trying. I kind of want to push 
the uh, the style of this face like a lot further than it currently is. I kind of I kind of almost want to like take the take the jaw and kind of like push it push it into the the lip a little bit so that she's got like this maybe like more pronounced lips and making the lips feel like they're uh, kind of dominating the lower part of the face. I don't know. Let's try it and see what it see what it's like. Uh, if I don't like it, I'll just undo it, right? Yeah, let's go ahead and pull this in here. Oops. Yeah, maybe let's... Let's come over here. Let's, uh, I guess instead of that, let's do, let's do this. We'll just smooth that down. And then we'll use our Relax Smooth so that it kind of evens out the shape more. That should be a little bit better. Okay, let's scale it up some. Oh, I kind of like that. I kind of like that, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Let's invert this and let's kind of pull that chin in just a little bit. Let's see if we can decide a little bit of uh, manipulation with this nose too, if we like it. Uh, let's see, maybe I'll keep it more like that. Let's take this, uh, this bottom portion, kind of pull this up a little bit. Want us to feel a little bit rounder. Maybe, I don't know, let's, let's try pulling it against the face a little bit more. Um, there we go. I think we're, we're starting to get the anatomy somewhere there. Okay. Yeah, I think what we're going to do is we're going to just take cues from the reference really kind of make her our own version. <clears throat> okay, so let's, let's really start kind of playing with getting this, uh, this torso into where it's, where it needs to be. I don't think, I don't think I'll focus on anything kind of beyond, I don't know. I don't think I'll focus on much of anything kind of beyond the bust area. Uh, no, this is not my own drawing. Um, <laughs> Quinton! <laughs> How you doing, brother? Got myself some storm action going on, and it's just perfect because it's super overcast today. Um, if we're lucky, we'll get some rain. I think we're supposed to get some rain tomorrow, but yeah. Yeah, Portuguese is hard. It's just, it's just hard. Um, okay, let's see if we can get some of this to be more shapely. I think that what I need one of the things that I need to do is kind of lengthen that out a little bit let's pull it in I'm trying to decide like how much of the uh, body I actually want to create today um, It might be something that I just not worry about until ah, I got too long. 
uh, until I have, you know, like free time to be able to work on it. Uh, one of the things that I, I do pretty typically is I'll, I'll keep working on my ZBrush Live projects outside of ZBrush Live. Um, just to be able to get, like, you know, something nice to post on the socials. Um, that and I feel like it, it helps me as an artist so that I feel like I can bring an idea more full circle. Um, and let's go ahead and shape out these shoulders some. You notice I'm like I'm moving around the mesh a ton. Uh, I don't stay in place uh, for too too long. Oh, you got some rain, Quentin? Man, send it my way, dude. Yeah, I totally want some rain. <laughs> like, that'd be so nice. So so nice. Okay, so for this hair, this hair currently is just in kind of a blocking phase. Okay. Let's see if I can get it to better reflect the shape that I that I created on the head. Um, so with the hair, especially on a stylized character, you want to think about how the hair can reflect the character itself. Um, how you can continue shape design into the hair, how you can continue flow and, and shape language and uh, proportions and you know, keep telling the character's story through the hair. So, I'm just gonna kind of pull that in. And this is this is all just block in, so you know it's just what it is for now. I might, I might steal a ponytail from my. No, we won't steal a ponytail. Uh, let's let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the color from her suit. Probably desaturate it some. Uh, maybe take it a little bit more toward orange, and then let's uh, let's just paint her body in, so we know like you know this is where the suit is. <laughs> now let's do this. Okay, so we'll go color, RGB intensity of 100, fill object. So there we go. So now we've got like the suit color kind of in there. And we can have... Just kind of pull that in more like that, something like that. Just so it feels like it's a little bit more natural than neckline. And it's not going to be the exact neckline of the uh, the suit. But you know, at least she feels like she's covered. It's more uh, more age appropriate, so you can let your kids watch now if you'd like. Um I'm gonna start going through and maybe pulling out the cape. I mean that's kind of a cool uh, big bit of the character. So let's do this. Oh, let's do this actually. Let's go ahead and hit save. Yeah, so I didn't want to have the music up too loud just in case it was uh, too distracting. You know, let me know if it gets distracting or not. This is uh, also, I, I actually can't remember what it was called. Um, Three hours of epic and powerful fantasy music, legendary. Figured I'd pick something that's long enough so that way it lasts the whole stream. Um, yeah, so we got that. Um, and then of course we have our uh, our image, our reference image. Um, if anybody knows the artist, I I mean it looks like an Adam Hughes sketch a little bit, but I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Uh, who created this image? Yeah, it might 
Might have been Dave Cockrum, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look up and see who it is that actually did that image. But yeah, this is this is my favorite, easily my favorite storm design. Uh, super, super fun. Let's go ahead and turn that music up a little bit. If it's if the music is too loud, let me know. If it's not loud enough, let me know. Yeah, whatever. You know, just you know, maintain that uh, open open communication. <coughs> Oh boy, oh, I must have been loading something, saving something, there we go. Characters for fun, Storm. Okay. Just gonna pull that in. Trying to decide, yeah. Something that we'll keep coming back to later, uh, I'm sure, is is uh, the face design. You know, checking and seeing if it's something that we uh, that we like, something that's working with the uh, with the vision as it develops. Um, might emphasize or de-emphasize certain aspects of of the design as we go um, and that's that's natural that's, that's just kind of how it goes keep turning the topology on and off to get better judgments on the form and see how the form is actually going it's it's really important I get I get questions from my students all the time about like why I work in such a low resolution for such a long time um, and I mean, it's it's really just simply being able to control the form and the flow um, more easily. If you jump up into higher resolutions, you have to worry about controlling more points. You have to worry about you know, it's it's harder to smooth out bumps and and uh, and other things. So so yeah i like to i like to keep it in as low resolution for as long as possible okay i want to kind of lengthen out the lower leg uh it's not feeling leggy enough for me. Um, I think one of the things about about this particular design, I mean, I'm not going through and creating this particular design exactly, but I think one of the things that's very uh, attractive to me about it is that she's powerful and you can tell that she's powerful because of these bold shapes, but she's also very, uh, very elegant and feminine. Um, you know, very, very slick design work by whoever did it. <laughs> and you know, I like it. I like it when when feminine heroes can be that way, where they're powerful, but they're still feminine. They're still they're still beautiful and they're elegant. And um, well, you can't expect any less from the Queen of Wakanda, right? <laughs> it's funny, I saw that for the first time today, actually. Um, I'd never seen her referred to as the Queen of Wakanda. I'm gonna pull some of that out. Uh, downsides and disadvantages to working with higher resolution sooner is kind of like what I was what I was saying a second ago <clears throat> is that um, you get you run into issues of oh well, for instance if I were to if I were to go through and have this you know super hyper smoothed out uh, okay that's maybe that's maybe a little overkill um, 
it makes it so like if I wanted to kind of adjust the the hips and kind of make it so that it yeah, it, but then it's like eh, if, if that's a little bit too much and it's like I can't smooth it out um, and then if I want to go through and try to try to sculpt it with my with my trim dynamic and I'm trying to get you know kind of a cool shape or whatever uh, I can't I can't smooth those forms out as as well even if I get my smooth brush up at you know higher resolution uh, higher intensities you know so so the the higher resolutions really keeps you from working smooth and 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 keeping your your mesh clean um, so yeah that's that's the huge huge point uh, huge biggest reason to uh, to working in lower resolutions first um, keeps it keeps it smoother keeps it uh, you know like a, it keeps your topology cleaner uh, it's easier to control uh, your shapes um, Obviously, the dis the disadvantages would be kind of the opposite, right? So it's it's harder to control your shapes. It's harder to keep smooth, clean forms. Um, I actually got to decide if I want to. I mean, one of the things that's that's happening with with her character, she's got like this kind of cave in. At least you know it seems with with. Uh, How that's going. It's going to pull out some hip. That's that's like way too much. <laughs> but yeah, so so that's that's kind of my main thing about keeping the topology really low for a long, long time. Um, is really just for the sake of being able to uh, control control flow and form. Okay, let's check the butt just to make sure that we're getting the right shape because we're not. this uh, form with the thigh here. It's not meaty enough. <laughs> the way that it meets up with the torso. Yeah, it's just kind of a kind of a tricky point. These transition points, the uh, the hip and the shoulder point has always been a little bit trickier of a of a spot for me. And so that's that's where I really rely on things like my my anatomy model, making sure that that's um, you know things are starting to line up in that sort of in the in uh, with that sort of reference. Uh, because if the anatomy feels right, the character will feel a lot more powerful and a lot more relatable, a lot more appealing. Um, now it doesn't go to say that you can't have something be super stylized and and have it feel uh, have it not feel relatable. <clears throat> uh, there is I like thick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she is a powerful woman. Um but yeah, I, I lost I lost my train of thought. I'll forget about it. I'll probably remember it like middle of the night, and then I'll come back to it and be like, "Hey guys, remember that one time?" And then I'll be about to tell you, and then uh, 
and then I'll forget again. It's just it's just the way that, that the uh, dice roll for me right now. So right now I'm just trying to kind of enhance her in ways that feel that feel appealing, but that also feel um, kind of correct. You know, I'm trying to, trying to trying to think about muscle groups. change over to my select lasso. This is a cool trick, guys. Boom. Okay, so now this will allow me to kind of sharpen that shape up a little bit. Here, actually, let's, let's select that, and then we'll invert it, and then we'll go ahead Pull this down a little bit. Just kind of shape out the shoulders like that. So, yeah, that might be that. That's starting to get too distracting. I think too much. Too much beef. Kind of check this line a little bit. This this line's kind of kind of buggy. Uh, I want to have this rolling more down this uh, center lower portion of this uh, of this arm. And let's get a little bit more of a of a bow on the back and a, and a more straight on the front, just for the sake of what I'm wanting out of this character. Uh, kind of shape the forearm a little bit to get a little bit more of a like a muscle sort of deformation or muscle deformation muscle formation there um, Jenny Fryson okay cool Let me see. Okay, so back to uh, Emblal. I, I'm not going to be able to pronounce your, your username. The Emblalune. Emblalune. Um, that's a pretty cool name. So lower mesh is easier for form. Yeah. So so be able being able to refine your form and your shape language and things like that. Your proportions. Uh, proportions are so much easier to work out when you have a lower resolution mesh. Um, and then your higher resolution, Embla. Okay, that's good. That's good. 